What's up, what's up, everybody? The Smoking Word Podcast is back. And like I said, I'm going to start doing, making it official Sunday, the 17th, 623 Eastern. I'm saying it because right now my my, my guest, my brother is on, uh, what uh, what do you call it? Mid, what, Mid-Atlantic? What's the your time zone? It's over on there. Eastern. Eastern. You see, I don't even know. Like, I don't know what, what uh, streamline I'm using. I don't know what time zone I'm in. But uh, shout out to everybody who's been tuning in. Uh, you know the deal. We back. Smoking Word Podcast, new episode of the Heavy of uh, the Hard Corner every uh, drops every week, and I'm dropping some new music very very soon. I'm hitting the studio just to say within the next two weeks I'll leave it like that. But right now, more important, Detroit's in the motherfucking building. What's I got up? my brother. Listen, I'm glad we were able to make this happen. It was in the making for a minute, but um, uh, you know. Things happen for a reason, and the time is now. Like I said, Detroit's in the building, my brother. Good to see you, Jeff. Cold is motherfucking life. I try not to curse in the beginning, but there's no way I can't talk about cold as life, Detroit, and not like say a fucking in it. Right, right. Good to see you, Hoya, man. I love you, my friend. For real, I love you, Jeff. You don't know, for real, for real. When I see you, I think of a lot of things. I think of my brother, rest in peace. I think of double rest in peace. I think of two is rest in peace. I think of fat Kevin, rest in peace. I think of Ronnie, rest. I think of, you know, a lot. You know the deal. There's a lot of them, man. You know, it's, it's, it, I didn't even think about it to right now, just rambling all that bullshit, but it's great. But great to see you and you're looking good. How hey, you been? Um, it's good to be alive. Good to be seen. You know, I'm yeah. under a rock for a minute, man, but uh, it's good to see the people I've loved for decades and it's good to be making the life choices that, uh, that we're making now. And, you know, just that enlightened, you know, you love. look good, man. Yeah. Again, I'm really, you look good. Not just like good to see you. You're not falling apart. You look, your face is strong. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, we see guys in our age bracket. They look, you know, they look like, you know, they're weathered and, you know, oh, the yeah. hard living catches up. You know right, I mean? right. Well, I've got some hard miles on me, man, but I've been living right for the better more than a decade now. I've had my struggles, man, but yeah. we all do. But uh, Ramona and I, and we make the best decisions moving forward oh, from yeah. our diets to what we put our brains on to the the people we choose to allow in our lives or the people that we choose to love. And, you know, it's, it's uh it's a blessing and we're both feeling real good. And, and that's great. And that's why, you know, again, it's important for people like you uh, that uh, to have people like you to, 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 to be heard because in our world, you know, and, and, and especially in our world, meaning the, the more underground, the more, um, the seedy part of of the underground lifestyle, um, we we can show to us um being real about certain situations in our life, bad things in our life. Uh, it's almost like showing weakness. We can't acknowledge it. We can't acknowledge that yo, we got to make a change. Or else it looks like we're soft or whatever it is. You know, we we come from a macho era. You know, it's funny you say that, right? Because uh men view each other as adversaries, right? And we keep all that stuff inside. We don't look at each other as assets or resources, man. We were perpetrators of and victims of violent crimes. We suffer from alcoholism, drug addiction, mental health issues, because we never learn how to talk with our brothers. We don't, yeah, we sure. don't never look to look to them as resources and, and to lean on them. Very, very true. And, you know, you know, again, I come from, a, I'm one of the few guys that had, a, a, a loving family that came from a mother and father, and they were the parents to a lot of our people. You know what I mean? I, you know, you probably met them along the way, somewhere down the line, and, and and it's a special thing, and it's a, it's um, it's crazy because uh, our our generation um, we're starting to see the effects of of the lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like the people that went left and the people that went this way. You know, you you you're really seeing results, and like, no, it ain't just. No, you got to, you know, live better if you want to uh, maintain, if you want to sustain and keep, you know, going. 
Yeah, I agree with it, man. That our decision, I say this kind of stuff all the time. Our decisions matter. Everything matters. If everything matters, then everything matters. From the words we choose to use to the company we keep. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. And what, and what I meant, especially with you being who you are, from where you come from, from the band, because it's, it's more than a band. Same thing with us. It's like, you know, it's more of the, your, the, the, the CTYC is like lifestyle. It was like, you know what I mean? It, I don't, I, I never just saw it as a band. I'm like, nah, that's a state of mind over there in it Detroit. Was. You know what I mean? And it I'm is. like, and me taking pride in my top animalistic, I always said, those guys are animals. Right, you know, right. So I was like, I always knew. Again, I always saw it as that. Yo, I see you guys as equals. Oh, they they get it, and I saw it as the same way. I was like, yo, that's a different type of animal. I never, I never seen that part of the jungle. Right, you know, right. it was new to me in a different way. And but it's good that come. Everybody knows. You see, they. I know the real shit, and I know there's a lot of folklore. There's a lot of that fantasy, that's reality with you motherfuckers, but I know it. Oh, so yeah. I also know that's why it's good that one, that we have people like you still on this earth to be able to be like, listen, you know, um, yeah, we come from this. Yeah, you know, we 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 also take pride in stuff we did, but hey, you know, it comes to a, a point in life where you gotta make a choice. And if you know, you have to do what we did it, it's kind of like what people thought we were against many years ago, we got to kind of preach in a way yes. like to make it uh, uh, a little bit more vocal on. No, I'm trying to make something of myself. I'm not trying to be the, the norm, the regular, you know? Yeah. When you're trying to pass that kind of knowledge down, that know how down. Um, if you hid the dirt, you know what I mean? If you hid the fact that you fell. Uh, I don't care how many times when you hide the fact that you're human and you got failures and you got regrets you lose opportunity to maybe save somebody from walking in those shoes. So not only only do we need to encourage and build up, but we also need to be truthful about our pasts. Yeah. And that's great. And, um, and I know, you know, that's one thing I always knew. None of you guys, same thing with us. A lot of us, you know, even right or wrong, we never were ashamed. Maybe we weren't proud, but we were never ashamed of that. Um, I know a lot more of the story or whatever, but to, to get people up to, to speed because a lot of people still, you know, again, they, you know, they love cold as life. They love the, the, the stories that come with it and they love everything about it. And, um, like one, just, just take it. I don't need to even take it that far back. If just right now, you just came out of doing a bit, you know what I mean? You just came out from doing some serious thing. This is why, you know, why, you know, if this was us talking 20 years ago, we would have been talking about a bit in a different way, right, a little right. bit more like, yeah, you know, my man's bad. Yo, we got to sell it. But by now, man, we see it like I want I, I want to tap in and kind of because I know, you know, you see life. You always were a thinker. And I think you had a lot of time to think in there. Oh, yeah. Nothing and you can you, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can either think in a destructive way or you could think to rebuild. And I know which which direction you went. And, and um. Just to let everybody know right now, um, what, first of all, when's the last time I saw you in, uh, in human, like, man? It's got to be uh, tw- probably early 2000s. Insane, man. That's yeah, so man. great. Yeah, one of the one of the times maybe you're playing you guys, one of the last forms of c 2 s patch, caught you guys somewhere, and then, and then um, uh, you whatever the reason is, but you got uh, caught up and you ended up doing a little bit of time. How much time have you ended up doing? Uh just over seven. Just Jesus, man. Yep. Yep. I mean, we all know that we all heard a lot, a lot of the stories and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the difference is now you went in as a as a grown man, you know, more than a lot of times we go in as kids. Right, right. You know, you, you're going to see things different. And d- did you ever get caught up for anything earlier? Do any time or any? No, that was nah, my, nothing. First, my first bit. <laughs> Wow. I basically spent most of my 40s in prison. And and that's a weird dynamic. It's interesting to me because exactly, you know, usually our people get caught up early in the game. Yeah. You you a little is it way later. Um what oh, I, I moved a little different, you know what I mean? But yeah, when I did get my trouble, man, I, I had lost the ability to make good decisions. Uh I was slipping and mm. you know, I I did something foul, man, you know. Yeah, yeah. some foul got caught and, and you know, 
sentenced to 10 to 20, but the Supreme Court sent me back in front of my sentencing judge and I ended up getting a, a like a three year break off. My yeah. Head. Yeah. And, and um, let me ask. So now you when you first went in, would you what you said you were looking at originally? 10 to 20, 10 to 20. Yeah, man. And look at just 10 days into me. I don't even want to hear that. I don't want 10 hours. It, like, it, I, oh, yeah. It, it, it was rough, right? It, uh, prison was rough. You know, that front end of something always produces some kind of reward or consequence. And like you said, you know what kind of man I went in as, right? Yeah. I, usually in Rome, people do as Romans do. I say that a lot too, but I didn't. I went in there and I read and I worked out and I got my mind right. And I, they called me solo at times. They called me the surgeon at times. I ended up sewing a guy's face shut. But um, solo was because I, I, I did my bit alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I said, I worked out. I was in the books. I was doing everything necessary to never repeat this process. And, uh, right. you know, it kind of alienated me with the with the officers and with the population because people would look at me like, like I was uh, – looking down on everybody you know what yeah, i mean yeah like, yeah not trying to be part of the society in there right like i was better than everybody i wasn't i was just trying to make sure that nothing like this ever happened again yeah yeah and um how long in before you said okay all oh, right away did you turn up like okay yeah i gotta i gotta make a move right now i just got sentenced you know you get you go through your whole thing you get your your time in do you tell yourself oh i gotta start working on myself or or did it take some time while you were in there before you kind of picked up the pace with trying to make something mentally change in your head? Well, so when I got arrested for what I did, you know, I got a big family. I had five beautiful daughters and a yeah. son. Uh, God bless. I, I knew that I knew from that arrest moment that I needed to make sure that this never happened again. Yeah. So when I first got sentenced, uh, I immediately started. I was working on myself. I was looking in that mirror, that proverbial mirror, looking at all them little dirty, ugly places in people's hearts and lives and minds. And I just started replacing that with with new positive and uh, and good. Next best step forward. We're, we're always going to be at that proverbial intersection. We do the right thing or we do the wrong thing. We yeah, do the yeah right no. thing, Even if it's inconvenient, even if it's painful, there's going to be rewards that come from it. No, for sure. Everything does. You know, it's crazy. It really does. Even the worst thing, there's a reward at the end of it. You know, it might not be the reward that you want. It might be, but it might be the reward you need. Well, you know, well, that's the thing. Yeah. Blessings sometimes dis are disguised as curses. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and, and let me ask you this. When, when, where you were locked up, was it near your hometown? Was it near your home? Or you, they put you, oh, they sent you out. Huh? Well, so you're, you're, security classification is based on the nature of your crime mm -hmm. and how much time you get. So when I first went to prison, I was in the max levels for 40 months. I was in a, a two man cell 23 hours a day for the first 40 months. And that was when my security classification started going down. But the closest I ever got to home, I was only there for eight months and, uh, and they rode me out to, to Jackson, Michigan. Mm. But Man. yeah, I knew the minute I went to prison, leaving those kids that I love, like a father's love for his kids, right, is supposed to be the driving factor in everything he does. And what I did was so selfishly disgusting, right? Uh, I knew that I knew, and you know yeah. that would that was my driving force to one day hope in hopes of <clears throat> recon reconciling with my kids for doing what I did. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you, and you know, whatever it is, something that's I tell people, you, you, you know, you had to reach down for something to be like, okay, I'm gonna use this. And did you meet any? Did you see anybody? You must have ran into somebody from the hometown, right? Oh yeah, throughout oh, yeah. your little visit, uh, your little trip to the system, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I ran into some people I knew that knew me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. At least sometimes there's at least right something interesting happening, right? Like a little fucking. Well, I mean, if they're good people, you connect, you know what I mean? And you yeah. kind of, you know, walk it out with each other and kind of bounce things off each other. And Yeah. And then, all right. So once you get, um, you set up, um, you ended up getting some time off. How long in the bid did you know you were getting that time off? Uh, I was, uh, I was five years into it before the Supreme court even remanded me back in front of my sentencing judge. And then it took another year to get there. And then I think I did another couple or, you know what I mean? 
like so when before you got it did you did the did your whole case did it you were like yo i have a good chance did you feel it coming or you were like i don't know how did it work like you know because i know you keep trying right you keep trying at the board right oh yeah well it's not with the board so oh. when you first get sentenced you have a right to appeal right the sentence and then from there if it gets shot down it goes to the michigan supreme court where there was a case going through the supreme court that uh rendered judges decisions uh, discretionary and not mandatory, right? Yeah. So the Supreme Court remanded me back in my front of my sentencing judge and asked him, would he have given me a materially different sentence had he known that the sentencing guidelines were uh, not mandatory, but discretionary? And he said he would. So I got back in front of my sentencing judge and he looked at my jacket, my file, and he looked at me, Hoya, I remember it to the day he looked at me. He said, uh, nothing indicates change more than somebody's jacket, more than somebody's file. He said, you were doing the right thing before anybody was looking. He said, had you been in there oh, yeah. fighting and doing drugs and running around with gangs? He said, I wouldn't give you three days off. He looked at me, he said, Mr. Ginellas, I'm proud of you. I had, I had probably a whole row downtown of supporters, friends, family, yeah. uh, you know, and I turned around and kind of looked at him like I thought he was going to let me go right then. But, yeah, 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 yeah. No, but it was like, wow. He was like, yeah. Oh, wow, how did that feel? That shit must have been like, oh, yes. Oh, well, man. Yeah. And it, so I got blessed. But back to your to the, the original question, did I do my time with, with a, I don't know if it's going to work or you got hope. You have to have hope in there because it's a dismal place. It's a dark place, man. There's young kids, 18 years old, coming down with 60 year bits, life bits that ain't never going home, oh. especially in those upper levels. Yeah, there's right. a lot of violence and there's a lot of hopelessness. So I chose hope, even when it didn't look like hope, because in the good book, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for. So I stood there, Hoya. I went in that law library every day and it was like reading Chinese or Russian. I was yeah. with headaches, right? But I knew that I had to fight in these, the general population. They're like, lay down, do your bit. You did the, the crime, do the time. They just follow. Even there, they follow. Oh, yeah. But I couldn't. I had to have hope. I had to fight for my family and get out. And you know what I mean? And, and I got blessed with with three years off. I would have yeah. I would have only gotten out of prison this last April. That's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. Thank you. know, I, I, What's good to, to think that for once. You know, you do right and, and, and the right person acknowledged it. You know, you did what you did. You got what you got. But like you also were trying to fix it and they noticed yeah. because, you know, a lot of people also that also deserve it. Don't get noticed because they these people are so fucking callous. These judges and it's a machine, bro. It's a yeah. machine it's an industry. Honestly, yeah. industry to keep bodies in them places because there's a lot of money involved in that machine. Yeah, it's sick. It's sick. And and, and while you're in there, what where was the music on your on your on your lifeline? Because one, obviously, you know, the music could save a lot of people in there. But two, but your band was so crazy and the beefs and this and that. So did you go in there thinking like, oh, I'm done with music? Or you were like you know, fuck, you know, reliving a little of that or like, yo, let me start writing or let me think of something new or what was your whole brain? Where were you at in there with the whole music thing? So uh, I, while I was in prison, I would write, you know, I wouldn't compose like lyrics in a song, but I, I did a lot of writing. Um, but I had a sour taste in my mouth about music. You know, there was a lot of things that happened over them decades that Cold as Life was a band and a lot of, a lot of us are you know, six feet under the ground. And I, I was never going to do it again. And yeah. uh, Roy and I got together and we started playing a little bit. And then we ended up signing a deal with a 389 in Baltimore, Dom from integrity. And he's been doing a great job releasing these vinyls. And we just oh. started getting contacted uh, to do shows. We finally ended up deciding on doing one October 7th. So, but the whole time I was in prison, I did not want to do music ever again, man. Yeah, it's usually that's what happens. You know, some people get turned off. I heard different stories from different people in music doing the thing, you know. And, and now I know when you, you end up coming out, where does you you ended up doing some stuff, right? Like the, the, the band did some stuff right when you came out, correct? No, no, no. no. We're doing some stuff now. but That's uh, what it is, because I know you, you connected with Roy again, but I wasn't sure if you played out or just you're going to start to. 
Well, we started, me and Roy started messing around, but uh, I don't know what happened with the guy, but he, he, he kind of just chose to do something different. We had a parting of ways, but got you. Yeah. Oh, so that's it. So, so as of now, you weren't doing no music. Why did I think you were doing so? I felt like you were playing. You played out somewhere. Maybe because you ran into. Oh, I've been hearing you on some podcasts and the sh yeah, that, that show was, coming up. I felt like you were playing shows. No, not yet. We haven't done anything. And um, oh, so when's the last time you were on a stage? Uh, uh, two thousand seven with Ramallah. Oh, the Ramallah run. I forget that. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. That's where I might have seen you somewhere. Yeah. I'm maybe, trying to think. Maybe, man. Maybe. That that sounds because I, I feel like we smoked somewhere. And it, I mean, we always smoked everywhere. But I want to feel like it was on a, maybe on a Ramallah. And if, if so, that would have been the later run and stuff and whatever. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And then now, like, it's good. Now that, you know, again, I don't need. But people love the stories, the whole one day you do got to put, you know, I remember Richie was trying to put out like the documentary and stuff. Somehow I wish a movie could be made because it would be interesting because well, I remember seeing you guys every at one point you guys were in New York, maybe every other week and every other week there was a missing member. You lost guys, lost a new member, uh, missing limbs and then they, you know, losing lives i remember the wild i'm like again i was like how many these guys die every other week i swear it felt like that yeah it was but, it was a rough you know we had some rough patches for sure wow those yeah those are fucking some definitely and um now we're getting into exactly i don't getting away from that when you came out we're gonna get into what you're doing you're still around music and what you're getting into but did you still have the urge to get behind the mic, get behind the guitar and like physically uh, uh, put out, be behind the music in that way still. Well, it, it wasn't until we started re-releasing all of our records with Dom with that A389. Yeah. We we're getting ready to re-release that declination, our last record. But it wasn't until then that I really started wanting to play guitar again. Oh, really? That low? So you really wanted nothing, nothing. Even when you got out, you're like, that's it. It's done. Yeah. Well, Hoya, so there's a, uh, when you get into the lower levels in the, the system, they have like jam rooms, right? Yeah. Where you, you kite the, uh, the rec department and put in an, the hours that you would like to hit this room. They got guitars and amps and you can plug in and jam that, you know what I mean? They, yeah. the lower levels, man, they'll even have like bands do concerts on the yard. It's crazy. Yeah, but, no, Roger did that. He was in a, in a, like a salsa band in jail when he was locked up. Yeah, right. same thing. Yeah, it's cool shit. It's cool yeah, shit. So. But uh, I never, I never messed with it, man. Oh man, to do with it. And then um, yes, yeah, so and then now and then again when we were first <clears throat> when we were first talking, and um, it was funny because you were hitting me up about the show that's coming up. We're gonna still talk about it in Detroit. But I already knew that I was going to we were making the announcement that I wasn't going to be in the band. I was leaving the band and all that stuff. So I kind of felt like you were like, yo, I can't wait to see you. And I was like, you know, we're going to it's going to come out tomorrow. And I'm like, why tell up? I, I felt a little weird, but I was like, I wish I was going to be able to see you. But um, long story short, now moving along, you connected with uh, an old friend and one of especially with Madball of one poly. As far back as I can remember, being my promoter and being, uh, you know, the, the the one of the main people that was bringing the East Coast people to the Detroit, you know, and you coming now, you're you're starting to uh, you, you're telling me you're working on the other side of the whole music thing on not bringing bands. You hooked up with, <clears throat> we're gonna bring the drum roll when Ramona when I, we bring her out, but not yet. But what now let everybody know what are you getting into and then we're going to bring the star of the show right. you know the reason why the person who the OG on it who you know is putting you on and letting you you know it's gonna, she teaches all the ropes a little bit on how to deal with these freaking animals in this music business <laughs> but um, let everybody know what you're doing now because that's more important than the old stories is like where you at now because you're doing some cool shit yeah yeah so like with every everything right there's a backstory Ramona and I have known each other for decades, right? A mutual love, a mutual respect, but friends. Um, she was married. I was married. But we've always had this mutual respect and love for each other. Uh, uh, fast forward, I go to prison. I get out. Um, my 
oldest daughter, uh, God rest her soul. She died of a fentanyl overdose about a month after I got out. And uh, Ramona being uh, digitally savvy, uh, I asked her to help me get into my daughter's Facebook account because I wanted to pull her music off of it so that I could put a, a playlist together for her service. So now she does it for me and, and, and we connect and we connect in a, in a, in a very real way. Um, like I said, we've always had this love and respect for each other, but it was a friendship, but we've been together for the last three years. We love each other. We're building lives together. Um, COVID kind of put the brakes on a lot of different things with venues, bands, agents, promoters, all, all of it, everything suffered. So with those breaks being on black Iris, uh, uh, wasn't doing much because the whole world was shut down. Now uh, I get out, we're together, COVID starts lightening up and, and we start working together. We're rebuilding this uh, or restructuring this beautiful monster that Ramona built in Detroit. Let, let's get, let's get her knee. I know she's on the side. I didn't want to sit next, you have to hear the whole CTYC story that she lived on. She had to deal with all you fucking animals. She had to deal with all the East Coast animals, the Midwest animals. <laughs> Hold on, drum roll. I'm gonna add a drum roll. Gator food, you're gonna have to add a drum roll, please. Ramona. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you. Shout out to everybody. Like, I know who you are. I know what you did. I know what you've done. I know what you've made. But give a little, uh, uh, a little uh, history on who you are and to, to, to Detroit, especially because it's important because Detroit. It's starting to make no always made noise, but it's starting to make noise again. And there's a reason why, because there's a dynamic duo. I would like to say that's helping to restart it again. But Ramona. Well, you know, I, I was thinking about it. I think my last show before COVID was your show. <laughs> was I, think, I at that one? Yes. And oh, I right. had, and I had a boot on and I have another boot on right now. But I can't believe that I was trying to put the two and two together that I think Jeff was had just got out or something, but that was the last time at the magic stick. And yeah, you know, it was nice, you know, to remember. Yeah. Now I remember the show. Now I remember the yeah. show. Now I remember the show. Cause I think that was the only time we ever did the magic stick as a matter of fact. Yeah. And I remember, yeah. So many uh, albums. If we did, yeah, AF always played there. We always were at, at St. Andrew. Yeah. St. Andrews. Yeah. Well, and um, yeah, like she was saying, so let everybody know, like, that when they, like one or everybody she was book she was booking shows forever but i want you to tell because i'm also curious how, when did you start well i grew up with a bunch of boys that played in bands in livonia there was you know the suicide machines that's where they're all from oh and one of there was so many different bands suburban delinquents wrist rocket but they all skated and i would go hang out with them you know but one, I got really close friends. I was an honorary buck, they used to call me, but he passed away. He moved to Atlanta to skateboard year round and he got murdered. So St. Andrews let us do a benefit for that, for him, for his mother and Suicide Machines headline and then Cold as Life and then all local bands. And we made like 20 grand for his family. And that was, that was when I just fell in love with it. Like it was the best feeling to get to do something I love that helped someone and be with all of my friends while doing it. Yeah. And I just got lucky after that. Isham, a rapper from Detroit, hired me for a while. I worked for his record label doing publicity. And then I worked for these guys. I worked for Cold as Life in their office in about 2006 or seven, I think, maybe earlier. Right. I don't, I get the days confused still, but um, then I went and worked Live Nation and then I worked with Andrew Ellis and Matt Galley. And so I learned how to book shows from Perry, who ended up being the head of Live Nation touring. And I learned how to book tours from Andrew and Matt Galley. So I got the best of both worlds. Once they taught me with all the connections, it just, it was, it was just easy to put, our friends together. 
You know? Now, let me ask you before this, when before you were doing this, were you doing anything organized? Because to, to do what you do, you need to be organized because it's, uh, you know, you, you know, to like, you know, you got to put your faith in a lot of people that shouldn't be. <laughs> you should be putting your faith into a lot of time, you know, hoping, hoping they show up, hoping they do. They do hoping they don't. I screw the place. I'm hoping they don't beat everybody down. I'm sorry. A couple of times. I had a few times where, I mean, one time that there was a very large guy and he took all of the door money for a, he is legend show with like Dave Shapiro is their agent. And I couldn't, there was nothing. I, I was like, I have 1500 bucks in the bank. My dad will pay you on Monday. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Right now, he there. The band was sweet and was like, "Put a, save yourself a little money and write us." You know, I wrote him a check for like a, a thousand or twelve hundred bucks to get them something. But I, I don't. I really think it was just the friends, and I didn't want to just be the girl that carried their drums in. Or yeah. I got sick of selling merch, and and I wanted to help them. I was saving my my tips to put out my friends tapes when they were still doing tape yeah. cassettes and stuff. So yeah. I just started to look on my own. That was how the Esham thing happened. Yeah. And then once that happened, live nation, the St. Andrews girls saw that I could do a show and they, they were, the that's where, so, so after that first one and you were like, okay, but did you tell yourself, all right, I'm going to book hardcore shows. Or I'm going to book anything that comes into the Detroit, or I just want to book, like, where were you at? Like, oh, what was it? What how, how? What was the opportunity you had at that time? Well, so when you worked for live, well, when you worked for SFX, Live Nation, whatever, we, they were ritual at first. And Perry was in charge of everybody and he would book all the shows. We would help him sometimes, but we would go rep the shows. So that was how I got started. And I mean, I loved it. We had our loaders were Jeff. And all of our, my guy friends. And then security was all friends. I mean, it all yeah. became family. So I, I just, I, I offered to do whatever they would pay me to do. Yeah, yeah. Then once at, I think it was maybe two years in that I got to be assistant to the head talent buyer. And that was when I said, hey, if you don't want to book AF because there's no room, like the shelter and the halls book, can I do it at Elvin's? So then that was how Black Iris started. Yeah, and then you and let me ask you this: When our good friend right next to you was away, were you in contact with him? No, um, that's I regret not being in contact with him, but I was pregnant the whole time and yeah. having surgery. <laughs> but so look, no, 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 but you, you should have because it was things happen for a reason. You yeah. had to not that. Look, you guys knew each other forever. This is why I say to me, I know a little bit more of the story. I know that how we were all friends, you know, forever. So to, even to me, it was surprising, but not. I was like, yeah, they grew up together. Why wouldn't they? It don't seem that weird, but it's weird. Like, oh, <laughs> at the same time, it's like crazy how it happens in life. But it's um, so the whole time away, you, you, I, I, nothing. I asked his wife because we were we were. I was married. I was having first pregnancy. You know, I didn't really, I didn't know what I thought about kids yeah. in general. So I was yeah. kind of scared. And thought, I got two. You want one? <laughs> I, 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 I got two. I two. love you, Jay. More than <laughs> enough for me. Yeah. I, yeah no, no. But I, I just didn't, I felt like if she needed me to do anything, I would have, but she didn't need anything. So yeah, yeah. I just left it there. And I definitely was shocked when when he when he called when he got out. It was yeah. it was it was just completely different. Something that everybody was like, "Is she stuttering and not knowing what to say?" And I was like, <laughs> "I'd like look at the phone and I wouldn't find the words to text back." And they all would be like, "I don't think I've ever seen Ramona this silent or yes. you know, stumbling on her words." So now, now, now let me ask you this, Jeff. Yo. Besides, you know, all right, you come out, you know, you know, you know, whatever. The, now, before you got, I remember because I remember everybody always being cool or whatever, but I don't know everybody's hit it. Before you guys were never nothing, nothing. As you younger, right? Friends. You know, always cool. That's what I always thought, whatever. Now, 
So now it comes out who who you think out of you two started feeling the wait a minute, there's something a little different first. Well, uh, so like she mentioned, we were just texting at first. I ended up calling her to help get this music to her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. And uh, from there, the messages started getting a little bit flirty. You know? Yeah, I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I... She was she was in the pool one day over here at her house, right? And I'm at work. I can't believe you're telling this. And, uh, <laughs> she texts me, yeah, I'm just cleaning the pool at the bottom of the pool. She's like, but my flotation devices are keeping me up. <laughs> and I ended up telling her, I can come over and help you with that. And I was so, going to say out of nowhere, you see a cannonball, psh, Jeff, right. out of nowhere coming. Psh. So we ended up uh, getting gotcha. together. I paroled. When I first paroled, I was living in a, uh, in a trailer, in a camper, right? Uh -huh. Trying to get my stuff together. Yeah. And... Uh, and I and it was at my brother's house. He's got some property out there by where I was in prison. It's nice, and trees everywhere, and it's nice out there. And I had this camper, and uh, and she came over one night, and we and we talked, and and yeah. we kissed, and it's been on ever since. Yeah, no, that's dope because again, yeah, people don't know. Like again, you know, we we were all real close. This is why I say that. Like she was, you, Ramona hung out with all of us. I was talking about you, and I told Jeff. I was talking. I tell a certain story. I won't blow it up here because I don't know what that out. But about trying to get into Canada for, <laughs> oh, you know, that but, is but, the story of the. I feel like, but I I love it because I use that example. I go, no, Ramona, you guys, say, yeah, girl, pretty girl, and where all the savages are there, and we're trying and the whole thing. But I, I I was just talking about it. Um. To somebody not too long ago, and then I, Jeff hit me up, and we're like, I was like, yo, I was just talking about Ramona too, and I was bring you up in that way. It's like, yeah, I remember one text I got after. I think it might have been you or Freddie or someone, and they, one of you just said, "How is it possible? The sweetest one? How 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 come you?" And I was yeah like, uh, yeah. Listen, I I never seen border, but they were just like it was like you opened your mouth like. No, yeah. they weren't having it. I never see like you know, some of us ready had you know discharged a couple things. This guy had this, that, and they didn't they weren't having it for a moment. I was like, pretty funny, it was pretty great. That Canadian border, that's yeah. some of them Eastern European borders. The, it's the look at I've been blessed to travel all over the planet. Right. I've been strip searched once. I and that was at Niagara Falls. <laughs> Thank you, Canada. The <laughs> For horrible. Huh? And then, all right, now you hook up. Jeff, did you have, obviously, it's also to be around the music, because I'm also doing this and other stuff, but to be also around the music, because it's what we live in. Yeah. We could still kind of do what we do in a different way. Different way. Uh, how did it get into you? Like, yo, maybe I start um, trying to help her out. When did you get the bug for trying to? Put some shows. To, I mean, because you kind of help put shows together in the past for yourself, yeah, yeah. anyway. Well, you know, so this is how I I saw it. Right, I saw this beautiful person that built this beautiful machine. Right, decades of history of Black Irish booking great punk shows, hardcore shows, and just shows in general. I saw this beautiful thing that she built, and then I saw the results of what COVID did to it. Right. And and we're together, right? And uh, and and I started talking to her about like, let's do some shows, let's do this. And this was before we even started really talking about Cold as Life, wasn't it? Oh yeah. So we were just, I was wanting Ramona to have what she worked so hard and cared so much for once yeah. again. And that's not like he, that she ever lost it, but the COVID thing really yeah. Was, uh, to rebuild was weird. With, was... with with all, I, I don't think I got to ever tell you guys about like I I was working with Atomic Music Group in California book that booking agency so I was booking Gutter Mouth I booked Jell of Yafra for a while Bad Cop Bad Cop I mean so many bands that I loved but it was so hard to be a mom mm. to book bands yeah. book shows here and then a divorce fell in my lap and then surgery after surgery I two hips yeah. a knee an an yeah. you know, ankle toe it was, and then COVID, it was kind of like, you know what? I am so proud of what I've done. And I love looking back at all those flyers. And gosh, every Black Christmas made me, whenever people thought like I did a good job, it wasn't me. It was all, it was us. It was the team. It was Detroit. Yeah. 
was our friends and that's what we did. And so I didn't really want to do it. I mean, I always tell him that I remember the exact day he was like, you don't ever want to do shows again. And his yeah, brother, right? I was like, not really, because it was so <laughs> nice to not, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was nice to have a break and to tell some bands, there were a few bands that I booked, not to mention any names, but I mean, it was nice to tell some goodbye, you know, yeah, and, I know what you mean. Cause they just did, never, I'd be like, I need a Sunday. My aunt's got cancer and they would call me all day Sunday. So it was nice to get a break from it. But that's been the best part of this is that we aren't going crazy. We just want to do the stuff that we love yeah. and bands that want us to do their shows. That's what we want to do. And we would just like with the coolest life show. It's awesome to be working with Tied Down and Edgemen. I've known both of those guys since they were so young. Back when I was young, now they're the young whipper, you know, whipper snappers, chasing <laughs> it way better than I am, you know. And that, that's what I was gonna say. So now it comes up, you know, which I'm glad because you know, for us, it was it's easier when there's one person in Detroit. If you want to be, call Ramona, right? Let's <laughs> keep it like that. It was it was way easier, right. you know, because you did every degree. You know, you would do from the 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 you know. The, the, the basement somewhere to the big, you know, club. So yeah. it was always good. We knew you always had a spot. Okay, can I can't put you here. I'll put you here. You can't do that. Let's go over here. Yeah. So and it's, it's better to do that. And you always, again, since you came up with it, you understood it. You knew how to work. Which band, you know, even if they were getting a little loose, okay, I, you know, I, I, I could fight for this band. This band's getting a little too asking for too much. You, you know, you were able, and I think, one being a woman and two also being a woman that people knew they couldn't just walk over. You were right. able to keep a uh, situation in check with uh, egos. Not that you didn't have to deal with them, but <laughs> you know, people well, knew that you, you know, they couldn't just bark on you. It, it was good all the time. Yeah. That's like a few of the stories with some of the hardcore bands that have been like, like you guys. I mean, gosh, I've been doing your shows for like, <laughs> My whole life. 20 years, I think. Yeah, some and, shit like that at least. Yeah, and it's it's nice. Some some of the band one two bands called me Promona instead of Ramona. You know? Promona. Why Ramona. not? Why I, I wish I came up with that one. Promona. Right. I, I I always tease them. It was comeback kid, I think, and this is hell. And yeah. and you know, they just knew that no matter what I was there, I would yeah. stick up for them if I had to. And if someone needed a ride to the hospital. I always was there at the end of the night to do that right after I paid everybody. So a lot it, of those. Yeah. I mean, we knew I knew how to handle it. And that was the good part. I mean, I was very fortunate that people knew I could actually say to the security, like, please let me handle it. Yeah. If I need you, I'll let you know. And then that that calmed all of us down. Yeah. You know, it was just a better vibe when you didn't feel like you were getting pushed around or. Pushed. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Especially when you got to bust your ass doing what you were doing. The last thing you want to do is like be talked down or like bossed around by like the people working for you, no less. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, security has no job if they got no show and there's no show in the venue without the promoter booking the show. So, you know, I know how it works. You know, that, so, that was that was one of the things with the stick. It was always like, holy cow, the. Some days the sound guy would leave making so much more than me, but it was, it was like, you don't have the show if it's not me. And yeah, yeah. There's it's, a, it's, it's a team. It's a team. You know, you know the deal. It's a team effort in that whole thing. And, and let, now let me ask you this. I'm still, cause I'm still a little bogged out because that you're together and not, <laughs> did, did you ever think anything before that? Like even back in the day, like, yeah, you know, Jeff's goatee. I don't know, you know, when he's hitting somebody with a bottle, the goatee turns me on. Uh, you know what I mean? Or like, oh, when he's like, hey, never. Hey, 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 we 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 threw this party one time in in, in this park and just outside of Detroit, okay. and it was all music people, right? It was uh, front house engineers, it was promoter reps, it was bands, it was it was the family that we always talk about, right? But yeah. it was our local people, it was the people yeah. at our table, right? We had this party and we all got together for this picture. And like I said, we've always just been friends, right? Well, in this picture, we're at the center, right? And you can see my hand around <laughs> her, on, her, on her stomach, right? And we're both smiling. We got these big ass smiles on. There, there, was, there was still no like yeah. 
connection. Like, you know, I'm looking at her like I want her. I was I was married. She was married. Yeah. But just and, comfortable. You were comfortable with. You. Right. Right. We were comfortable with each other. But I always thought she was pretty cute. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always liked her. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that's, that's great. That's, that's, I saw her spit one time. Oh, <laughs> I didn't spit one time, and she spit like a dude, right? And I was like, "You're like, Ding, think, right? There, you saw the hearts. You're yes. like, that's a that's really some coldest life love story. I saw yes. her spit, and I fell in love. My right, right. my ex husband used to say, "Are you gonna tell me that Jeff G thought it was cool that you spit like that every time you spit?" <laughs> You're like. Actually, that's what that's what won him over. You know, he didn't want me till he saw that. As a matter of fact, it's the seed that was planted decades before we got together. <laughs> yeah, listen, the universe happens like that. I know how it goes, and it was meant to be for it things to work. Maybe it wouldn't have last. It wouldn't last if it happened then. Yeah, you know, I believe that. I really you know, believe that. We're all running too fast for it to have lasted back then. You know, everybody yeah. was just going too hard and. Everybody, you know, I believe that. I believe it. They really is not supposed to good or bad. You don't get what you got. There's reason. Sometimes maybe you know somebody couldn't handle it, or you know, or something. This had to be, you know, this is your your little bright light from what you just had to do. And the same thing with her, you know. It really, you, that's what it felt like. It felt for sure, like, especially when when he got out. It felt like I wasn't. Obviously, my kids are the best thing I have, and I love that they're so damn cute darn cute but um it felt like i was almost i tell him that it was my, like my own prison at that time because mm -hmm. my my arthritis like popped out so bad because i gained so much weight with all the pregnancies mm -hmm. i didn't know i had inflammatory arthritis then so i felt like i was in my own little prison for a while for sure but by yourself stressed and my ex was a firefighter he was not around hardly ever i mean bands would call and be like don't you have any other hobbies? And it was like, I'm not having kids all the time. It's just surgery, kids, surgery. Yeah. He's not around. So, you know, it was, it, it felt like it, it all happened for. Like, yeah. It seemed to be on, uh, um, at a good spot when people need anchors, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, all those people keep floating, you know, I said, yeah, you know, and well, I, I mean, she's got strengths and abilities that I don't have. Right. I've got strengths and abilities that she doesn't have. When you mentioned the team earlier, the team yeah. matters. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's under one roof team, like a, a personal relationship or a working relationship. The yeah. team matters. And if you try to build with the wrong teammate, it's going to yeah. fall apart. Yeah, you know, for sure. Like, I, I, again, you know, nobody has to hold the whole car. It's like people. So, you know, a team, you know, a team complements each other. Yes, you know, I said if somebody's just holding all the cards, Okay, in some situations, that's what they may want. That's what may work. But okay, that's whatever. But a team, when so, when you're complimenting me and I compliment you, it, it makes me strive to, to push it another level. Absolutely. Then you could, you know, that just gets even. Okay, I'm gonna take that another level. And you're gonna listen. If you're gonna battle me in anything, battle me with gifts and love and and, and you know and, and all that type of stuff. You know, you ain't gonna never hear me bitch about that, you know, stop loving me so much. Stop, you know, so it's like something to strive for. You know what I mean? Like, that's for sure. And then now with the show coming up, what was how what, what was the deal? For, you always did these kind of. Well, the, you know which one I he I wish he I can never put into words that show we did on the floor where there was two. We had remember it was terror. Mad ball trapped under ice, bane or terror, mad ball, bane trapped under ice. Nace, it was just insane. Yes, back, back, back. That wasn't the suicidal one, was it? No, that was that, it. Was part of that festival that the the I remember that was another one. Yeah, it was a, another Detroit one. Yeah, that was a great one. It was like early, but it was nuts. Yeah, That's she always did these wild to, shows. I was trying to tell him about that because I'm like, you would not have believed some of the things I got to get away like. I never had a show where I said, I'm going to put merch on the stage and have the bands play on the floor. Yeah. We have a little more room and I can pull off more bands. And we did it. And, and it worked out good. It was like cool vibe. I remember because it was like you hanging out. Every The hangout just went from the music to the hangout. It was like. That was the best part, too, with the stick because you just you ate pizza and then bowled or, or just hung out until it was. It didn't and, that was another, and that was another time was suicidal. I remember we yeah, did it. 
I feel like I just saw that flyer. You know, it's hard how I you forget some of your shows now, but that it's nice. same thing. Everything we named right now is that, you know, shows you've done. And right now, every Detroit's going through me. Forget the St. Andrews. I don't remember. That seems like one show to me. All those shows, the bomb shows, like one big show right. to me. Right. Like it's well, like one. We're excited for this. That's hopefully, I mean, like Black Christmas, I was doing before COVID and it became, so it was, it was basically like the festival I did with you guys on the floor. Yep. But I did the Magic Stick, the Garden Bowl, and the Majestic Theater. So, and you got to go from like one room would be Pumpkin Ska, Garden Bowl, a lot of dirty locals or whoever yeah. really wanted to get, you know, with the crowd and, and the Majestic, a more hardcore sometimes, sometimes just more suicide machines, you know, whoever wanted to play, but it, they were so awesome. And it is so great because that's what's exciting doing that with him like and us together it just it that was the only that's what made it more special you know yeah that's what i was gonna say that that um what detroit always had and what was good because uh you know it it, it makes noise it gets quiet it makes noise it gets quiet but what's good about the uh, detroit when now when you're making noise it's with these festival kind of these big type of events so it it's Detroit is already on the map as far as when you have one of those, it's not like weird to, oh, let's go to Detroit now to go see it. Now it's like, no, Detroit's going to have one, all right, trapped on the Ida, they're going to go see that, then they're going to go to the California FY, you know, the Florida one, the California one, Detroit, which is great. You could do the big event, you know, the big kind of mashup event, and then you got this one coming up that where we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, um, I know you worked on it, but how how did this come up? Where do you start when you when you start with this? Like, where's well? Like, okay, we're gonna book the show. Who you got? What's the first step you take in this show? We we had other people give him want me to give him offers, and so he had a few offers on the table. Um, and I don't, I, you know, we both love Jimmy and Curtis. So out of everybody, Jimmy Lawson, he's got the, he does the tie down fest and Curtis Dalton, he does Crowfoot. So okay. it ended up being a collaborative effort between Black Iris, tie, tie and Down, and then the Crowfoot. Yeah. So what oh, happened was, so we mentioned the team earlier, right? Uh, one of those unwritten rules. I'm just learning this because I've been on the band side, the music mm -hmm. side for so long, but now Ramona and I have been working together. One of them unwritten rules is agents don't contact bands personally. They go through other agents. Well, <laughs> because I am who I am and know people like you and yeah, Bumble and <laughs> Dwid and you know what I mean? I was able to contact them personally and say, yeah. hey, we got this event October 7th. You in and, and get that inside. Right. And they would be absolutely. Here's our agent's number. I said, well, let them know that you want it. And then I'm going to put Ramona in touch. Yeah. That's, and that's how we got probably 90 percent of these bands for October 7th is that way. Yeah. And then, the, and then the tied down guys and then the Dalton from and Crowfoot, they did their part. It was yeah. it, it was good because the, it's the younger guys that I, I've been working with them on shows for their local bands or Curtis Dalton was booking in like Saginaw and Flint. We might, you might have done a mad ball show with him at, at, before, I don't know, but he did Trapped Under Ice, you know, so I was booking hardcore bands out there with him. So I, I had known them both for a long time. That helps you already feel comfortable and know where my place would be with those two. Yeah. And Michigan got good. Not that it got good, but it's good again. Like the last, we played a couple shows at Flint. Mm -hmm. and we had some good shows like, you know, the last couple of shows that I did out there were actually, you know, people coming out. They were like, we just wanted to see shows. So it was good to see people. That is Boy, I'm the sorry, best. That's been the best since COVID. I mean, everybody is about coming out to the shows again. So yeah. there, there was a show that Ramon and I went to uh, just a few months back. It's this tied down fest. Yeah. Boy, Detroit is making some serious noise. There was there was probably twenty three hundred people going I saw. bananas. Bananas. I'm talking bananas, bro. Twenty three hundred people. No fights, dude. A young, vibrant, healthy hardcore scene. Even There's the no people that would get injured. Actually, one of our friends, her nephew, 
like one of actually the guys who played in some meat life picked before, up this 16 year old kid and yeah. smashed him. Oh. But he he hurt his neck. He went to the hospital. All he wanted to do after he they said he's you know you're okay mild yeah. concussion. He went back to the show. He loved yeah. it so much. He was back there and then came the next day. I, I mean, see. Is, is that the one I'm trapped? I'm trapped on the ice plate. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> I seen one. footage. Forget it. That shit look crazy. You should have seen him behind. He had never. I'm like, Jeff, you have to listen to Trap Under Ice. I booked them. I did their first U.S. tour. Wow. You've been away that you don't. Yeah. You he, weren't around for that. Wow. And, forget. And yeah, I, when got, he listened, I, got, I went away in 2012. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I feel like were, I can't remember what year it was when I. I started with them. Yeah, I forget so because you know what we played a lot with them, so I know them from you know for being around for a minute. But you also, yeah, exactly. You've been away for a minute too, so it's probably it was. And they were definitely in, a, and and um, they were in that little other lane of hardcore, also the younger, newer lane, which would interact with us because we played with a lot with them. You know, right. shout out to them. We would always play with them and the Trap Rice. I, mean, I like loved when, it. When that, was, that young new yeah. band gets oh, yeah. that seasoned vet, and you know, I don't like it when it's. I like it mixed like that because when I was a kid, I was seeking out the history of hardcore. I was yeah. looking for it, and these young cats do too. So, what yeah. better way than to put a, a, an established band that's been doing it for decades with an upper up and comer? And have yeah, them. for sure, I love it. The, the The new energy is good because um. Sonically, they're back. Yo, they sound like like new bands. As a lot of these bands, they're doing what Coldest Life is doing, like uh, uh, the the punk crossover discharge style of right. of hardcore. Right, you right. know that uh, there's it's not for a minute. It was just becoming very technical new metal, which sh whatever that's cool. And I thought that's hardcore for now on. And I said, all right, I, it is what it is. Then this new wave, you know. The Scows, the pot, all those bands. Shout out to all of them. But they brought back the punk element and that dirty punk. A lot of these bands will get. Now they're dipping in, which I always love. You're going to dip in that barrel. I want the discharge. I want to exploit it. And, you know, we could give you a handful. And then, okay, now we mix it in with the old hardcore to make our new hardcore. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and, but that, what's, what's great is they're tapping into those sounds again. Those, Punk that aggressive punk crossover side of it, which is great because that's what Coldest Life was with to me was kind of like the Celtic Frost because of discharge of it because it was the open chord, but like it was punk rock. Even though you guys were punk, it had that punk shit. I was like, yeah, that shit ain't punk rock, mm -hmm. you know? It was, like, like it was like hardcore punk, oh yeah, you know? What yeah, I mean? yeah, you know, it was like it, it, that's what I was saying. I was like, yeah, it, like it was that discharge shit, but more towards this because I was like, yeah, and that's what Celtic Frost to me in the metal shit was. It's like that open chord. Like if you're not listening to discharge and exploit it, you're lying, right? You know, because that's just that the only people who could do open chords and, and make it okay, it could hang with. Hugging as far as guitar licks and shit, you know. <laughs> and I was like, that's why obituaries, you know, those type of bands and all those. Well, that's who we were listening to, the discharges and the GBHs and you exactly know I mean? the best. Yeah, man. Like, you it, know, it was so good to watch him though, listen to the young ones. I mean, yeah, the musicianship of these young cats coming out nowadays is ridiculous. ridiculous, man. Their composition and their 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 abilities, their talent levels. It's, it's years away from when we were kids. I I'm a hater in the best way. Out of <laughs> jealousy. Yeah, these kids, yeah. <laughs> it's just pure jealousy. Now I admit it because you know what it is. They I'm not to hate, they have a lot. Also, you know, you could go on YouTube right now and they'll teach you. Hey, I'm not saying as an excuse, but that's great. Because I got it too, and I'm not practicing. I could be doing that too. But right. it's great when you have that drive as a youngin, as somebody who finds something new now. You got more tools to add to your arsenal. You know, we had to reach out to the local shredder and then look what he's doing. And you know, could you show me that? Now you go on YouTube or even Ramona as a show. You can literally go on YouTube and find how to how to book a show. Right. It'll give you a, somebody will give you some real knowledge. One from this one, one from that one. Back in the day, how you had a they say, no, Ramona, you got to hand out flyers first yeah. and we'll let you. You know, that's how it was. But. We still need the drive to want to do it, to want to go seek it. 
And these kids are ridiculous now. They the are. way they play, the way they sound, they put the way like songs together. Hardcore got generic for a minute. Yeah, you know what I mean, even punk rock did. Well, all music gets sterile, right? You yeah. know what I mean? It comes, it comes and goes. It comes full circle. You know, you'll see, yeah. like that. Uh, I don't know, like just like classic rock, right? Yeah, faded. Then grunge came in, right? And then you know, but now you got these new bands coming around doing like old rock and roll again. Yeah, it really did. When they say it, it really did. This new wave of band. Shout out to Drain. Drain is doing that Bay Area thrash style. Yep. You yeah. know, they're not reinventing them, but they brought it. They brought it back to, you know, our scene. Forgot about it a little bit, and boom, yeah. they came with their energy. Boom, now, and I love that. We all love that thrash shit. You yeah. know what I mean? We all love that suicide or that Bay Area. Yeah, man. You know that type of that's that the thrash that we grew up. Yep. You know that yeah. <laughs> English metal and <clears throat> punk became what the fuck we do now. You know, and all that shit. And now with these bands, so name, because I know you got a lot of new bands and some OGs. Let people know about this show because this show is a pretty bugged out, crazy show. Oh, it's stacked. It's stacked. Yeah. Right. You want to give a little run now? Because I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have my man at the end. We'll we'll blast the flyer because we're gonna put it up. But cool. because there's, there's so many people, like shout some people. I don't got the list in front of me. Cool. Ramona, who we got on there? Terror. Death That's threat. it. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yo, shout Death out to threat. Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Fair Death Threat, Madball, Death Before Dishonor, Mind Force, Crazy. Um, Never Tech. Ending Game, and Great. Tech. Love them. Yeah. The, uh, the world. The world. The world. Shout Blue out to them. Things, um, Blue Collar Stompers. Uh, hey, Dink is doing a little special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good. You got the real Detroit in the house. Shout out. That's some. We got a lot of them. MH Chaos is playing. And is D Block playing too? D Block is yeah. playing. Uh, oh. New World Man is playing. I feel like I've been confusing a little because we're working on Black Christmas now. So I'm like, I, I know, I know you mean. I know how it goes. I don't want to forget anybody. Oh, yeah. and, and, I know. And I think it's we definitely got not all. intentional, but uh, there's there's a lot of bands playing, and I think we hit yeah. them all. But. Yeah, no, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure they add that. We'll add the flyer at the end of that because, no, no, it's stacked. And I even like the, the way the flyer was looking. I seen it, the one thing going around. It looked like a record or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Really cool shit. And it's like, and now, um, who you, any specific band you excited to see? I'm, I'm really excited to see. Uh, we, we have a show November 4th, Stick to Your Guns. Yeah, yeah. And- Shout out to them. And well, we love them. Comeback kids playing with them, but this band that's playing this bill with this show is Spirit, Spirit World. World. That's my, my boys. Yeah, man. One of my shout new- out to Spirit World. How dope are they, right? Oh yeah. Orthodox is on it too. So I mean it's gonna be a great show. Yeah, Yo, Spirit World, real dope. They kill it. They're gonna kill it. They're dope. They're the- I never seen rhinestones look so hard. Right, right. You know what I mean? No, but good dudes, but great band. Again, yeah. stick to your guns is a as a banger too. I can't wait to see Especially that. Especially because we have a mission, you know, Rawson's in the band now. Pol- yeah. but, so it's so nice to and get- them too. They've been killing it. Stick to your guns. And they're another band that musicianship killers, you know, they sound great. They yep. sound like an album when they play. Like right. Wow. I, I know I wish I was there. But listen, there's no way Detroit could get rid of me. I'm going to be back, you know, one way or another. But I'm the main thing that I was glad I was able to catch up with you and let people know, because I've been wanting to see Jeff. And same thing with you, Ramona. It's good to see you. And I'm glad to see you both together. And I'm glad to see you and talk to you both together because you got this show coming. Yeah, because man. one, that's important for the show. I'm glad that you're doing shows together. I'm glad you're doing shows with him. And I, and Detroit should be motherfucking happy that fucking, you, you know, we that they still got Ramona and now Ramona got fucking a little backup right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. The team. That's mm-hmm. the team, man. So more shows, Ramona. All right. Maybe not go crazy, crazy with a thousand shows, but you're going to still do some more shows or what? Yeah. Yes. I Jeff, you, you got to make her do it. You know that, Jeff, you got to make it oh, because yeah. I have something new I'm working on. And I'm only doing special things, and I'm and I will do Detroit. I'll, I'll put it out there right now. And I'm only playing for Ramona. If I ever play Detroit or nobody, that's it. 
That's it, man. Uh, yep. You're you hey, Hoy, you know you're an yeah. honorary Detroiter. Yeah. Anyway, that, everybody out there, you hear that? I'm gonna get my fucking face tattooed right now. <laughs> I'm 30 years late, but I want it. You heard it. Yeah, I'll have the type table ready with you for dining. <laughs> you already know. Listen, I already got a maniac skull right here on my leg. Yeah. So you know, listen, Detroit. I got the listen. I take I got love for Detroit again. Like for real. Like I told you earlier. When I see you, I think of a lot of people, a lot of my loved ones. And that, you know, I love you guys. And then I think of a time, special time for all of us. And, um, you know, I think of all my brothers, a lot of our brothers that aren't here from my brother, brother, Ernie's, the O's, you know, the deal from everybody's, you know, the, you know, the deal, the whole CTYC family, the whole NYC family. But we here, we're here to represent them. And I think we're here in the, with everybody's with the right state of mind to represent these people. And make them proud. Absolutely. So, you know the deal. Ramona, Jeff, I love you guys. I'm glad you guys are still in the mix because we got to let these people, we ain't these old bitter bastards. Well, you know, <laughs> we, we help, we were a part of this shit and we want to see this shit go and we wanted to keep going as, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, man. We yeah. want our people with us to the end, right? I want to keep all my friends oh, around yeah. me. I want to be able to be like, oh, man, you'll be in a book with Ramona. You know, hey. and I will. Hey, hey, Hoya, not everybody's privileged, right, with older age or coming into older age, right? Because right? like you just mentioned, we lose a lot of people at a very young age. Yeah. It takes some seasoned people, people that have been up and people that have been down to, 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 to really make it to the end and show people how to get there. You know, absolutely. I, mean? I, I, I agree. And 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 I learned that I learned that. um you know, uh, where we have a duty to represent. If we talk about all this, my, I love my other fallen brothers and sisters, my family. If we really love them, it's our duty to do them right while we're on this planet right now. So when duty. we're doing good, they want us to thrive. And when our families are thriving, they can rest. Duty and our privilege, man. You know, Absolutely, you know, absolutely. To rep the people that are no longer here, man. Exactly. I'm honored to, and I said, and I got to do them right. So I tried, you know, if it wasn't for them, you know, I could be you, wherever we where a lot of us ended up and, well, you know, or we're here now. So I'm glad the yeah. main thing is you guys are still doing it. We're still doing it over here. Detroit, I love you. I'll let you know when this drops. Jeff, you know the deal. I'm going to put the flyer up right away on at the end of this. Ramona, we'll talk. Love you. Listen, you know what's up? I love you guys. And you ain't seen the last of me. Cold is life, Detroit forever. Mm -hmm. One love, we out. I'll hit you later, Jeff, all right, with some info. Love you, brother. Love, love you, you, man. We out.